Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek. In this episode, I want to talk about the disconnect between software publishers and the consumer. I want to talk about the difference between AAA titles and what I would call kind of your bread and butter titles. This is a topic I've been wanting to touch on for a while, and I guess the final kind of, you know, the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back for me was Konami's recent announcement that they were going to pretty much exclusively go to mobile uh, phone, uh, even away from 3DS, Vita, and strictly develop the crappy freemium pay-to-play model uh, on Android and or iOS. This is the same company that has developed in the past groundbreaking series. We could talk about Contra. We could talk about Castlevania. We could talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We could do a lot of talking because Konami was pretty much synonymous with Famicom and the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Konami was a huge, was hugely instrumental in the success of that console. Now, here's the disconnect as I see it. And we're also going to bring in some other publishers. This, look, in this video it would have been all too easy to just pick on Electronic Arts, right? Um, sure, you know, uh, Epics, you're just bitter, you worked for Electronic Arts, and admittedly, yes, in some ways I am bitter, only because I know the company that Electronic Arts was, and it was such an eye-opener to me to have that illusion dispelled. You know when you set something up on a pedestal, whether it's an actor or, uh, you know, some kind of famous person? And, you know, they're maybe known for their generosity and their awesome personality. And then you meet that person and they're basically an ass, right? They turn out to be the biggest asshat. You almost wish you hadn't gone through that experience so that they still would be up on that pedestal. That's what Electronic Arts was for me. And I know a lot of the people who talk about Electronic Arts in a similar light, similar fashion. Like me, they had good memories of Electronic Arts. Electronic Arts will always be Mule to me. It will be Bard's Tale because it published some of the best titles that I had slash have ever played in my life. Um, Trip Hawkins era, Electronic Arts, almost second to none. I mean, to me, it's right up there with Origin Systems, Surtech, uh, you know, some of the... the New World Computing, some of the seminal uh, publishers and dev houses of the day, uh, old EAs of, you know, Trip Hawkins era. Well, Konami, you could say a lot of the same stuff about Konami, because like I said earlier, they were instrumental in the success of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, what do I mean about this disconnect? Well, what's this disconnect you speak of, Epics? Well, let's get into that, because the reality of the market is is that AAA titles, uh, you know, the success of a AAA title basically determines the fate of a franchise, and it happens over and over again. If you look at the Might and Magic series, um, they were all successful games, even near the end, but the budgets had gotten so high and the expectations of said triple A title so high that you're almost bound to fail because you're setting yourself up for always doing better than the last title. And it, it I call that the Wiley Coyote effect, right? And it's when you have a good plan, but it fails once, and because it fails once, you never try it again. I mean you guys remember the Roadrunner cartoons. Wiley Coyote had some fucking awesome ideas. And he almost got that Roadrunner. But 
something usually went wrong. He either set it up incorrectly, his timing was slightly off, whatever. The main point being, had he probably tried it again or up to a maximum of a half dozen times more, he would have eventually got the Roadrunner. But he was always looking for the new best thing rather than really truly trying to improve the things he was working on. You know, the, the idea wasn't bad. The execution maybe was. And had he bettered his execution, he would have caught the Roadrunner. How does that tie into the gaming? Well, it ties in like this. New World Computing had hits on their hand. I remember Might and Magic uh, 3, Isles of Terra. It was huge. Um, Clouds of Zine, same thing, huge. Um, the Mandate of Heaven, probably the last best Might and Magic game other than the strategy ones, let's just talk about the RPG here uh, for me. Because 7, 8, and 9 really were kind of steps back. Uh, they could have been a lot better than they were, but they were kind of steps back. Uh, Might and Magic 10 has kind of restored a little bit of that legacy, and oddly enough, it's called legacy. Uh, pun not intended. But um, Konami, likewise, you know, they had some awesome intellectual property and electronic arts <laughs> has a shit ton of intellectual property that they could resurrect at any time but they're not and this is where kickstarter comes in and for me kickstarter has really breathed new life into the rpg genre because it's allowed people like brian fargo to take an old title like a wasteland and make a sequel and Wasteland 2 would not be around if it wasn't for Brian's persistence, right? We talk about persistence and the willingness of a publisher like Electronic Arts to, to part with that intellectual property for a one-off license or a series one-off or whatever. The fact that they were so willing, you know, it looks like a great thing on the surface. Oh, fantastic. Electronic Arts is willing to, to do this or Konami's willing to, to do that. But it's kind of sad in that they don't see the potential, right? It's almost like Minecraft. Minecraft should have been done by Lego. Let's face it. Had Lego come out with it 10, 12 years ago, uh, because it was the next logical step for Lego's evolution, was to digitize Lego bricks and put it into a game. But they didn't. Another company came along and did that. And that's what's happening with a lot of these RPGs. And it's... Another reason why for me is is it's so stunning to hear Konami with that message because they don't see the potential of what they have, right? Well, let's look at some of their IP. Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, which is still probably, in my books, the top Castlevania or Metroidvania whatever the hell you want to call it, the top. It was the hallmark of that series. And yet they always tried to reinvent the wheel after that. And you've got some decent Castlevanias for the DS, which kind of continue that RPG light, um, you know, thing that Symphony of the Night had going, but they never really came back and tried it again. And now they want to go mobile. And they've given permission for things like Bloodstained. Bloodstained is from the original dev team that did Symphony of the Night. And I want to talk about this because the crazy amount of money that it raised. So they had asked for half a million dollars, all right, to create this uh, Castlevania spirit uh a game in the spirit, like a spiritual sequel to Symphony of the Night. They asked for 500000 They raised $5.7 million. Million dollars. Yes, $5.7 million. A shit ton of money. Not quite what Konami had in mind, but you think about all those titles, and it's, again, I can pick on EA, I can pick on Konami, all the dev houses are like this. Another one that comes to mind is, is Square, right? Square Enix. 
how long have people been pestering them to remake Final Fantasy VII, right? They could have created that and they had a bestseller on their hands, but instead they're always trying to one-up. And look, just like an artist or a musician doesn't want to sing the same song or sing the same or draw the same painting year after year, you know? An old band that's been around 20, 30 years, they want to play new material. You know, it's like Metallica uh, forever uh, are going to be known for Master of Puppets and some of their older hits, and the fans demand that, sure. But that's not to say, you know, they can still come up with good titles. Of course they can. And so can these dev houses. So can Konami's of the world and electronic arts. But to have Kickstarters basically pull the rug from under your feet. Hey, I'm all for it, but it's just sad that they didn't get there first. Like Lego, right? So here you have Bloodstain, which looks to be fantastic. And again, Brian Fargo, Wasteland 2 wasn't enough. You think they would have learned their lesson, right? Electronic Arts. But no, they give him permission again with Bard's Tale. Instead of seizing it themselves, they have lost so much ground on the PC, elect Electronic Arts. They're really only known for sports titles anymore. And even the sports titles, people make fun of the reuse of the engine and ad nauseum. We don't even have to get into that. But how much intellectual property is Electronic Arts sitting on that they could be capitalizing on? They could be doing Kickstarters. They could be resurrecting, you know, their legacy, really. Make a spiritual sequel to Mule. Archon. The Archon series is still one of the most innovative takes on chess ever. Battle chess was kind of cool because it brought the you know, fighting pieces to life, but nobody did a twist on chess like Archon, right? Archon was super original for its time. Um, Konami with Symphony of the Night. They should have been doing Bloodstained. Electronic Arts should have been doing Bard's Tale 4. It just drives me nuts. On the one hand, again, I'm happy. We've got old-timers like Brian Fargo and, and Braben coming back and bringing us back the elites, the wastelands, the Bard's Tales. But why aren't the original devs doing it? Because they're so fucking preoccupied with the next AAA title that they're letting all these opportunities pass them by. And they will dinosaur themselves into a grave if they keep this up. Because it seems to be trending that way, doesn't it? You know? Uh, look at Divinity Original Sin. Fantastic old school D&D type experience, like a Baldur's Gate. And yet, why aren't the, why aren't the devs doing this shit? It just drives me nuts. I mean, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, this is a bit of a rant. I know I went off on a tangent. It's just, you know, I'm passionate about games. And I'm passionate about some of these old school dev, uh, you know, publishers. I make fun of them, yes, but I'd be the first person to stand up and applaud Electronic Arts or Konami if they just for once got their shit lined up and their priorities straightened out, right? I don't want to continually make fun of these guys. Not at all. I want to be able to have some of that old spirit come back. I want to see a proper Might and Magic sequel. I want to see a proper... Uh, another one. You know, I, it just came to me now, but... How obvious is Final Fantasy Tactics? How fucking obvious is that title for a sequel? Do you not think... Like, anybody who's watching this, like unless I'm on crack, but tell me if this isn't true. If Square Enix was to create a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo campaign themselves for a sequel, right? A true Final Fantasy Tactics sequel, Final Fantasy Tactics 2, do you think it would not go out like gangbusters? I can guarantee you it could probably raise 10 million on Kickstarter. Uh, a true sequel would sell like crazy on the PC, on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, you name it. I can guarantee you. And yet, we have to wait for somebody to do a Kickstarter spiritual sequel to F Final Fantasy Tactics. Why? Get your shit together, devs. What made you guys popular once, that creativity, that, that 
you know, innovative juice, it's still there. And it's so frustrating because we're all on the sidelines here saying, do this, and you guys aren't. You're going off in different directions. You're, you're flirting with bankruptcy. When you've got intellectual property that you're sitting on, again, almost done ranting, almost done venting, <laughs> let me know what you guys think. Does it not drive you fucking nuts, though, eh? Does it not literally drive you nuts? Um, let's just list a few. Final Fantasy Tactics sequel, no-brainer. Castlevania sequel, no-brainer. True Ultima series sequel. To get the horrible, bitter taste of Ultima 8 and 9 uh, out of our mouths and come up with a proper sequel, a proper Ultima 10 or 11 right bard's tale i can't pick on that one because we've got it um but there's so many cool old series and intellectual properties paradroid archon uh little computer people and on and on what are some titles you guys know let me know in the comments below hit like if you like this video subscribe if these are the types of videos you like uh, i do reviews I do rants like this, and I do uh, unboxings. Uh, reviews range from games to movies to anime, whatever I feel like at the time. As always, guys, rant over. Cheers.